everybody. Welcome to a special edition of Talking Elite Fitness. I'm Sean Woodland with Tommy Marquez and Lauren Khalil. We have just wrapped up the 2024 Masters CrossFit Games from the Birmingham Jefferson Convention Complex in Birmingham, Alabama. And uh, that exceeded my expectations. I had a ton of fun this past week. I'm tired. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But, <laughs> and my voice is hurting. But that was fun. But that it's was a, good to be that, tired right now. I said it to Chase on the air, and we'll get into a little bit more of this in, in a second, but I feel like that was sort of the reset that the community need, needed after what happened at the games. Yeah, for sure. And, and a lot of people told us as much. Like, even people that weren't at the games but came to this, they said there was, like, almost this, like, uh, sigh of relief mm-hmm. moment. Like, okay, there's a sense of normalcy here. There's something that we can all kind of get together, see some friends and see some people that we hadn't seen and, and like, you know, just kind of like have our community in one place again to kind of, you know, whether it's bounce ideas or, yeah. you know, you know, share some emotions and, and, and then get back to something that we all love, genuinely love doing. And, and that, you know, that, that has healing powers in its own right. Sure. And having the crowd here being so close to the athletes, when we spoke to some of the athletes yesterday, even Jason Grubb, he was saying that, yeah, it was great to be in the Coliseum, but being an arm's reach yeah. away from his wife and his kids was something really special to have the community that close as yeah. you're doing what you love. No doubt. We want to thank our sponsor for this episode. That is Thirdsy. I know we all packed the Thirdsy. It has been. It's made a huge difference to me uh, on the road here. I mean, thank you, Thirdsy, for helping me oh sleep. Uh, yep. It's hard. We for would me be to, in worse shape if oh, we didn't have Thirdsy there's right now. No question about it. And if you guys want to improve your sleep and recovery game, you can go to Thirdsy.com or you can scan the QR code that's right down there on your screen. And it'll take you to the website. You can use our code TEF. You'll save 20%. Uh, it doesn't have melatonin in it, so it's not habit-forming. It has GABA, L-theanine, magnesium in it. That helps calm your central nervous system, helps you get to sleep faster, and it helps you stay asleep longer. And like I said, had it not been for that stuff, yeah, uh, I would, yeah, I'd be in much worse shape than I am now. Like, I, also, it I, saved me. I think it gets undersold. It's got a good amount of collagen protein in it. It does. Too, yeah. like a non-insignificant amount. So it's like you get a little bit of that on top of the whole the sleep aid benefits. So, That's yeah. why our skin is so nice. <laughs> <Yeah>. 30.com. <laughs> the code is TEF. You will save 20% if you use that code. So check them out. They're great people. They make a fantastic product and they definitely saved our bacon here uh, in Birmingham, Alabama. But let, let's <laughs> let's get back to what we were talking about. I think there was some there was some questions as to like whether or not like this would work. And that and what I mean by this, it's spinning the, the, the Masters games off into its separate thing. Yeah. Um, and I was a little skeptical. I didn't know how it would work. And I think it is it is the right decision. I, I would have scheduled it differently. I, I've said this in the past. I would have liked to have seen like the Masters and the Adaptives uh, lead into and the teens lead into the CrossFit Games, mm-hmm. sort of be the, you know, the the build up to it. Yep. But I only think this gets bigger and gets better. And I think Joe and Bob, the two guys who run this, uh, the Legends Comp and who took this over, deserve a ton of credit. I've never been fist bumped by so many athletes <laughs> like it, it, during a during a broadcast. Yeah. I know I saw athletes go up to them and, and thank them, and it was cool. I think for them to have to have center stage. Yeah. And I, I, I'm really excited to see where this goes now in the future. Yeah, and that's that's the biggest thing to remember, right? Is like we we we're gonna walk away with so many positives from this weekend and this experience, and and so much of the feedback that we've gotten from the athletes, you know, judging event mm-hmm. control has been positive around the uniqueness of this event and the athletes getting to feel like they get to own the stage here, and that's just year one. Like yeah. it, it's it's easy to think that this is what you know year 15 of the Masters CrossFit Games. But really, it's kind of a reset to almost year one, mm-hmm. just because we have a new event organizer for it and taking on that mantle for full force, and you know, working out all the kinks in the relationships, whether it's communication with HQ, figuring out funding, sponsors, all of that is a different dance that you have to do. And uh, I, like you said, I'm excited for year two and what's beyond, especially if they continue in this format and make improvements, which they always seem to do. Yeah. There's so many benefits because it's allowed us to tell more stories of 
really the athletes in this community that have paid the, paved the way for many of us and they have L1s, 2s, 3s. More than 80 of them have uh, uh, own affiliates and some of the messages, Dan Miller's family, he was in one of the older Masters division, one of his family members reached out and was like, this is the first time they've seen their grandpa on TV and his name being called and just hearing those little memories that mm -hmm. people have been able to experience. I think this is such a good move for CrossFit in that storytelling and giving the community more opportunities yeah. to showcase what we do. Yeah, yeah, and they had their representatives here. Yeah. And they all seemed, you know, very happy and we saw got got to see Don Fall was here. Dave Castro was here. Yep. Uh, we talked briefly with Adrian Bosman. Yep. And they were all, you know, super happy with with what was uh, going on and look, I you, you know I got to give CrossFit another win for the amount of content that they've been putting out on on social media this the these past couple days. Great. They've had coverage of the teenagers divisions. They yep. have coverage of the master stuff. Like it was, I mean overall, I think this weekend and I didn't get a chance to really you know, pay attention to anything going on in the teenage competition. But this is a win. Like this is what this community and this sport needed to get back on track. And now we can start looking ahead to the adaptive competition that's taking the same place uh, weekend, the same same weekend as Waterpalooza. Yep. You know, there's some good things. Like I have a better feeling about the state of the sport and just the community in general after being here in person around everybody and seeing the results of the competition and the way it played out. Yeah, no doubt. It's hard not to. I mean, because on top of that, there were competitions that weren't necessarily part of the CrossFit Games event so to speak mm -hmm. they had the legends classic going on simultaneously they had an experimental division in the 70 plus division mm -hmm. um and the passion from those athletes <laughs> was palpable a lot. and then you had the team competition you had you had the four person team uh, teams for the masters in multiple divisions in multiple age groups and they were showing out in full force too so there was a ton of enthusiasm here and it, it obviously it's easy to overlook the Masters when you have the individual and the team competitions, yeah, right? Yeah, they are an afterthought at yes. the games. When they're there, it's it's just a fact. They yeah. are. And we heard that from a lot of them. Like, we'd go into the Coliseum. Yeah, that was cool, but it was like 50 people, yeah. and it wasn't a great atmosphere. Whereas here, and it's echoey, like and five you don't deep see on the people. Barrier. Yeah, it was great. Yeah. yeah, I mean, take last night, for example. Like, the front squad event, like, that was the only comp floor going at mm -hmm. the time, and everybody buddy was around and out and looking for it, and, like, so much so that even other... <laughs> Other athletes were like marveling at what their competitors mm -hmm. were doing. It was clapping in the background. Yeah, it, was, <laughs> it was a super cool event, and I, you know, it was a Saturday night lifting event. Mm -hmm. you know? and like that, that's what it feels like. It to a, a different extent, obviously, because it is different. It felt like that what we feel from the individual side and how they build up momentum towards that kind of yeah. marquee type of lift. And it's cool to see that trickle down. And obviously, I thought the programming was solid. You know, there's some things that they can improve on that they know behind sure. the scenes. But o overall, like you said, it's a big win. Well, I think, you know, you start looking at the team competition, and I, I would not be surprised if that gets spun off next. Yeah. And I think this is proof positive that that can work. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and, and, and it has to be, you know, it has to be done intelligently. I think there's... I think there's a ton of people pushing, you know, the envelope forward for the team competition, whether mm -hmm. it was, you know, strength and depth or, mm -hmm. or Waterpalooza well, with their format. Yeah. Like That's going to be fun to watch. If yeah. that works, I think CrossFit should say, we are going to steal what you are doing with because that. Because CrossFit is, was absolutely here taking notes. Yes, they were. A thousand percent. Mm -hmm. Well, let's let's go back and, and just talk about our top moments. For yeah. The week. I don't know, give three. Yeah. Yeah, for and sure. So, in no particular order, that when I start, oh, I have about, an order. I think something about <laughs> Woodard's front squat. Yeah. Oh my gosh. At, what four fifty? Uh, yeah, four fifty. So, like a little bit of background. So, it wasn't even the. I don't even think it was the top front squat in his no. division. No, yes, it was, no, it was, but it, it was, wasn't the top, it was top of the day. There was a. I think it was Alexander Jolivet in the in the four fifty five. Four fifty five in the age group. Be a older. little the, the older. older one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that yeah, was yeah. the heaviest one. That was. But the way Ridiculous. that Jimmy Woodard did it, it looked like he had 10 to 15 oh. pounds more. And as I was walking back from the bathroom today, I saw his content creator. And I was like, what the heck is up with Jimmy? He should have put more weight on the bar. And he goes, Jimmy told me that was a 10-pound PR. Oh, my God. Oh, oh. <laughs> that, like, well, he opened it, I think, 385. And I'm calling it with Chase. And it just went. Whoosh, and I was like, okay, well, then that's going to. And he made small jumps. I don't, easy. I, I don't know. I'm gonna call, I'm jokingly call BS on that because I don't know when Jimmy last he might have tested his front squat back when you know Nixon was in, uh, in office. Cause <laughs> there's I have never I've never seen 445 move like that on a front squat. You know, like even like 
the way he moved that front squat is like the the videos you see but, uh, of like the the pro uh, like the high level like gold medal weightlifters yeah when they're just like testing a front squat uh -huh. and warming up their clean you're like oh my gosh his yeah. torso was upright it, it's funny because Bob Jennings, who is one of the event organizers here, he has a massive front squat. Yeah, 410. He's 410. Yeah, yeah he's, he was a him. Masters Games athlete in his own right. And, he, and you know, he's watching with a discerning eye, you know, mm -hmm. because it's obviously something he's good at. And that, the 445 goes up, and he looks at me, and he goes, okay, that was, yeah. it said a few expo <laughs> experts. Yeah, and yeah, we were like, yeah, yeah, yeah no, no doubt. All right, well, that's one of my first, so I'll just go through mine. Then I, I think about, I think it was day one when you had, uh, you know, we had athletes competing at opposite ends of the floor, and that was something new. We'd never kind of seen them go towards each other. And you had David Johnson and Jason Grubb looking at each other the entire time. It was the handstand walker. Yeah. Man. That was awesome to see that play out. And then the third one that I think about is on the chipper event, uh, Andrea Nissler on the final 75 mm. wall balls getting there. And she was behind uh, Caroline Klutz at the time when she got to the final 75 wall balls. And Andrew Nissler went unbroken on 75. And, and Chase Ingram talked to, to Andrea about that. And Andrea said, you know, I kept thinking about, about Taylor Williamson and that it was how disappointed she would be in me if I didn't go <laughs> unbroken. So <laughs> use that as motivation and just ripped off 75 unbroken wall balls. Just think about that at that fatigue level after everything they did that you can, you have the option <laughs> yep. To go 75 unbroken. That's why she's a 35 to 39 year old champ. So those are the top ones that stand out to me. And I think also just, uh, I think the environment here really, I was very pleasantly surprised by it. Yeah, no doubt. That was, uh, that was certainly one of the highlights of the weekend. I, I'll, I'll go with mine. I got a couple. So, um, the, <laughs> so the, the first event of Friday that we called. No, yep. was that it? The, the bike, Echo, the yeah, Echo that's Bike. That's actually yeah. what I'm looking up right so, now. We're so, going to have the same one. So our, the Echo Bike workout, if you're unfamiliar, had three intervals, a four-minute interval, three-minute interval, two-minute interval. And you had to do a buy-in of double-unders and pull-ups, chest a bar for some of the other divisions, and then you had to not chip away at a set amount of calories, mm -hmm. and if you got it done, you were done. Only one athlete finished in the first round, and that was Patty McGill. <laughs> and when her hand went up, when her judge's hand Wait, went up. Wait, the first interval. First yes. interval. Yes. First interval. At, okay. at, at 65 plus, I think they had to do 45 calories. Yep, it was 45 but for the woman. still, woman. she finished. Doesn't matter. Yeah, she finished She finished with, under four minutes. Yeah, she finished. Let me find it. Yeah, yeah. she finished in 348, so she still had another yeah. 12 seconds to finish. And when her hand went up, and it was like 320. Everyone looks around and is like, that's got to be a mistake. Yeah. Like, what's what, what's going I on? I wasn't even looking for a hand to go up yeah. because it was the first interval of yeah. three. You're not <laughs> ready for that. And, and, and the realistic thing was, like, she finished, she finished like, the pull-up double-under portion. Most athletes, when they going unbroken, got to the bike around 110, and you really start getting uh -huh. it spinning around 115. So then, like, two and a half minutes at 65-plus, you did – 45 calories plus a couple of rollovers mm. whatever she probably finished with 47 or 46 when the rollover stopped and got back to the mat and you're like what just happened that's insane yeah like it was insane. that's like what was it? it was the games event in 2022 with the yoke carry on the field remember yeah. it was like the interval thing where tia just like broke it just took oh, it the whole yeah, way and yeah, we were yeah. told i remember being in the broadcast back in the broadcast uh the, compound when we had we talked to the demo team i think it was allison scudge who's like oh yeah no no there's no one's gonna finish like in this first round and she bet you know, yeah basically exactly. did, yeah <laughs> and there you go patty mcgill yeah. compared to tia claire to yeah. that is, that is a, a heck good, of a comparison good work what else <laughs> you got? Uh, that one's up there uh dex let, hopkins snatch that, that was cool it's not on the, the broadcast he could mm. but so if you snatch with both finger all your fingertips forward he did a reverse because of a wrist injury mm -hmm. that, and that, then oof. and the clean event he's cleaning and then yeah, with, releasing his arm yeah yep and yep. same with the front squad event so he was able to you know finish the weekend before the cuts doing what he could that's crazy yeah i, I think uh we just spoke with him and and, and i i was kind of keeping a spot in my top moments just in case this happened we spoke with grub right before that finale and it, and it was a lot closer of a race than he wanted he mm -hmm. came into the weekend with a ca really bad calf injury and he was like, I'm going to put on a show on this last one. And he went unbroken yep. the entire 16. round. And, yep. He went, you know, 8, 12, 16 reps unbroken. 
and he was going toe to toe with an athlete who was just over to his left, and that athlete was actually ahead of him mm -hmm. most of the round, and he dropped, and you could just see like the championship mindset yep. switch. Well, right? and he did. That's the thing because Grub didn't was not racing that particular individual. No, it was not a factor. He the two guys that he had to worry about were on the other end of the floor. Mm -hmm. yep. he was well ahead of them. Yep. So he did not need to do that, and, and he still did. And he did it anyways. Yeah. And that's that's the, you know, that's. That's Tiger Woods coming down the 18th yep. fairway, and you know he needs a birdie, but he makes eagle on a par five. Or, you know, it's it's MJ just putting that extra dagger mm -hmm. in, you know, or getting a defensive stop after after the you know jump shot dagger he just gave you. And it, it it was really cool to see in person, especially because for him this is the closest I think he's been pushed, really in his four titles. Yeah. And well, now five. Now it's five. First and man to get five. In exactly. A row. First, first, mm -hmm. first athlete to do five in a row, and for, on, on the master side. So it's it's an impressive uh, performance, and it came with a clutch performance on the mm -hmm. back. And so that's yeah. definitely another one. I'm trying to think of. Uh, oof. I don't know. Is there another one that stands out to you? I think just overall, Will Morad, yes, how impressive. Dominant. He is, and I, I went up to him yesterday, and I was like, dude, you're like fine wine. You just keep getting better with age, mm -hmm. and I wonder if, I think Chase was alluding to this, the way that they're training yes. now yeah. and hitting things with intensity, bringing down the volume so every training session matters that mm -hmm. much more, and I don't think we saw one hole or weakness in any event that he took no. on this weekend. Yeah, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to piggyback off of that, and I, I, I don't think it can be overstated enough the journey that Will Moore has been on in his career. Mm -hmm. um, I said this on the broadcast. It's worth repeating. If, if you've probably heard it by now if you listen to us regularly. But 2014 makes the games as a rookie, finishes 14. Um, looks like he has an upward trajectory because he's coming out of that Central East Regional. Um, and then suddenly it all comes crashing down. The next year he misses out and he's misdiagnosed with an autoimmune disorder. He's told that he can never compete again in this sport. He switches over to the corporate world. A few years in, uh, he's miserable. Uh, starts to feel a little bit better. Gets some stuff sorted out. Goes back to the doctor. The misdiagnosis is recognized. Mm -hmm. And suddenly he's back competing. 2019 is the first year that he's able to compete. It took him like five sanctional events to be able to qualify. I, I was on the road with him in, in Iceland, in Brazil, in all the different places, and he finally got through. And what does he do? In that year of wild cuts, he makes it through and makes the top 10 at the games. Unfortunately, he pops his hammy, has a little bit of an issue there. Two years later, 2021, at like basically leading up to the games, his wife is diagnosed with, with breast yeah. cancer. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, at, at the age of 30, right? Like. Like how do you, how do you even how does that even happen you know? And, and he almost didn't qualify that year. It came down to like three oh. points at semifinals against James Sprague. Yeah, he made, yeah, he made yeah. Like that seventy six point deficit. He oh made up. my yep. god, he, that was unbelievable. And he does it by winning that event. And I mean, it was just a, a huge rally for him. And then so for all that to come back, and then he comes out here and he shows out in a huge way. At, you know he's wearing Lazar's jersey on the uh, mm -hmm. uh, on the floor for that final event. His wife's right there, front and center, cheering on him or him on. And you know it's like, you know, by at twenty twenty one, you don't know if that is you're ever going to get yeah. that opportunity again. And a few years later, he's a CrossFit Games champion, and he goes out dueling Henry Matthews for that last event. It was. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. They they're really taking down the rig yeah, right now. <laughs> guys doing the work with the old, the old impact driver. Yeah, the old impact driver. <laughs> That's just poetic. Yeah, it is. That's what happens when you do. When live you do it around setup, yeah. So, yeah. Right, but but all that to say, just like there's there's few guys that are more deserving than that, you know. And, For sure. And every and Will's just such a good dude through and through and. Yeah, that was that's well, awesome. And this is the thing too, I think for me, for people who don't watch, who may not watch the Masters competition or didn't have a yeah, an interest in it, like there were some like, genuinely exciting moments out there and great mm -hmm. races and you know fun events to watch. I really, really enjoyed this experience, and I haven't called. I, I think it's like the third time I've done a Masters event because I've done Legends twice, mm -hmm. and then this is the first time I've done the Masters CrossFit Games. Yep, and it was a lot of fun, and I really got invested. In it, and so if you're if you're someone who wants to watch competitive CrossFit and watch great stories and good people, 
check it out because it was fun. Like I really thought this over delivered. Well, and I think that's why this format is such a win for the sport as a whole, because when you have this combined with the elite individuals and the team individuals, it just gets lost, lost in the shuffle. But now when people are looking for a weekend to continue watching fun races and CrossFit, this mm. is just another opportunity to do so. And then you learn about the races, you learn about the athlete stories, and it just creates yeah. more buy-in having their own event. And, and this, this, thank you to anyone who watched at home because the streams for these legends they did great. Well, yeah. Yeah. yeah, they did better than they ever have in the yeah. past. So, um, you know, there's a, a lot can be done when suddenly you're 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 moved from like in the you know removed from the shadow of someone else. Yeah, and you know, we've been fortunate in the past to be able to tell master stories along the way throughout the season. But having mm -hmm. this kind of crown jewel event that you can build around from the future, you know certainly has a lot of athletes yeah. here pumped. Oh, I, gotta, I have to give a shout-out to Justin LaSala. Yes. Who won his first yes. CrossFit Games. Yeah. Uh, he's been so close in the past. And final event, he goes out there and, and he outduels uh, Sean Ramirez. Sean Ramirez. And, and who's the... Th uh, let me find it. I got you. Uh, it's funny because... Uh, Jamie McGarva. McGarva, mm -hmm. yeah. And, and it was fantastic to see him and the way he celebrated, just kind of the relief he showed when he yeah. realized he had done it by just kind of collapsing onto the competition floor was... Uh, was fantastic. So, uh, yeah, overall win, I think, no doubt, uh, you know, a lot of fun, and I think a good way. You know, obviously, there's still the, the cloud of everything that happened at the games hanging over the community. There's still many things that need to be sorted out that, uh, from that that we will be talking about in the coming weeks and you know, continuing to reach out to people to, to come on to, to discuss that situation. But for now, it, this, was a, this was just a nice little reset to kind of get us just – back on track and, and I, I appreciate Bob having us here yeah. and the, the community for, for showing up like this was this was a lot of fun so I think we can I can think we can for sure build off of this absolutely and and real quick just to because the award ceremony yeah. is about to happen behind us just a quick shout out Will Morad in the 35 to 39 Jonathan Edel in the 40 to 44 we got Jason Grubb five times in the 45 to 49 you have Justin LaSala as we just mentioned getting the win in the 50 to 54 in 55 to 59, John Kim, who we got to chop it, <laughs> chop it up with on Instagram. Uh, Great dude. He brings it home and gets the win as well. Joe Ames, uh, multi-year games champion in 60 to 64. John George, that was an excellent uh, race. Mm -hmm. He was only three points uh, separated from Freddie Cherry going into the final event. He gets it done. 35 to 39. You got Andrea Nistler, just I'm dominant performance. Mm. Carly Newlands wins by... Almost she clinched. She had a clinch. She, she atumied that thing. She went into the final event and had like a more than 100-point lead. It was Oh, over. dang. Yep. She yeah. beats Andre, uh, Andrea Pinheiro, who qualified as an individual yep. this year, and Carleen mm -hmm. Matthews, a former multi-year individual games athlete. At 45-49, to 49, Deanna Posey came up huge in that last event, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Kelly Friel and Val Vobrol. Janet Black, that was an awesome race with Jen Dieter, too, because yep. they were yeah. basically separated by one spot. Uh -huh. And Janet got the win on that last event as well. And then Joanne Cooper wins for the 50 Five to fifty-nine. That was that was a dominant. She had it basically clinched in that last one. Mm -hmm. Lori Mashiznik, eleven appearances at the games. It's Mashiznik. It's Mashiznik. <laughs> I'll never forget that. Yep. Oh, one of the favorite moments of Pat Mashur getting put in this place. And then Patty McGill <laughs> wins for the sixty-five plus. So, congrats to all of those winners. Like all all of them deserved all the attention and spotlight yeah. that they got this and week. And congratulations to the patron saint of crazy things we saw this week. Bronislaw Alenkowitz yeah. managed to get himself onto the podium. Oh, yeah. In third place. There was some <laughs> doubt about that when we left the broadcast, but it turns out that, yeah, he made it. So Braun is a podium finisher. So shout out to uh, Braun and Justin Kotler and Underdog at, at Athletics. So Yeah, man. That cool. was fantastic. Well, okay, here's what we have coming up. Uh, we have Adaptive. They have still to go. That's the same weekend as Wadapalooza. That's September 26th. So the weekend of the 21st. 20, yeah, weekend of the 21st. Uh, and then we'll have a, you know, we got Rogue coming up. Teens are happening yeah, right now teens as are going well. On because we're recording this on Sunday. So yep. the teenage uh, divisions are going on. And that, like I said, the, the content that I've seen on social media from that looks really good. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And I'm really anxious. I want to go back and watch how that all turned out. Because I know Joel Gaudet, who's a total pro, was calling that. So I'm sure it's going gonna, it's gonna to be fantastic. Uh, so I definitely want to watch that. But I. I, I love this. I think if we can get these age groups and adaptives leading into the games and build that momentum, I think you're I think you're onto something. Yep, for sure. And and shout out Nick Aranda in the forty to forty four. We talked about this a little bit behind the scenes. I think it's been out on social media. His 
daughter is competing in Michigan this yeah. weekend. Oh, cool. So he's been going back and forth, and All they've right. been doing some FaceTiming. And, uh, and I know the, there's, there's been a team, you know, filming behind the scenes that I uh, got to catch him watching his daughter's mm -hmm. event this morning. Oh, that's great. Oh, so that's you, awesome. you got the whole family thrown Full down circle. this weekend. Yeah, awesome. pretty awesome. Okay. Uh, anything else we need to cover? I don't know. What was your favorite, uh, favorite test Ooh, from this weekend? Favorite one. Oh. I really liked... I like that interval one. Yeah, yeah that was mine that too. was cool, and I like that last one. Yeah, I, yeah. I thought that was yeah. a great way to the, a great way to finish. And that event kind of went through some tweaks, mm -hmm. and and I think it, the way they ended it with the the hey, there's no rule, just do it. You know, we don't have to switch arms or anything like that. Yeah, uh, letting the athletes kind of choose. I thought that was fun, it was, and, that, and it provided some really good races. Um, yeah, I think those. I like that interval one a lot. That was that was cool to watch people just go full send on the bike. Yeah, I like the interval one too. I I, I think I'm that's begrudgingly I'm that's one I want to test at home. Oh, maybe, me too. May, maybe oh. make it regular pull ups instead of chest to bar. You know, because yeah. you know. Oh yeah, that'd be a problem. Big boy issues, but <laughs> yeah, that one and uh, the event eight, the eight rounds of the bar facing burpees toes. Yeah, I didn't get to oh, watch yeah. much of that one because yeah. I think we were we were doing another. We were doing, we were doing the, the chipper, standard. Yeah, and we were doing the standard. And then yep. we had to go do the. Yep. Yeah, that one was super cool because you. It, it was a master class for the best athletes in pacing and riding that line just yeah. enough where you're like that clean. That last clean looked a little iffy. Like mm -hmm. how you going to respond? And then we, you know, Will Moore had went sub six on that, and he's the only athlete even in that God. time frame. It yeah. was it was silly. That's crazy. I, I think at one point, Paul Tremblay looked over and saw that Will was done. <laughs> it was just like, <laughs> 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 whatever, Will. Yep. So. All right. Uh, that's going to do it for us for today. We're going to have another episode later this week, and we're going to get you know, back to the sort of the more news world of things. We're still working on uh, trying to dig up some guests who can talk more about the big issues uh, that are going on in the community. But for now, we're, I think we're just going to enjoy this experience, enjoy being here, and just celebrate this win because this was this is a big win for CrossFit, and it was a big win for the community, and it was a huge win uh, for the Masters athletes who got to take center stage. Yeah. Uh, once again, big thanks to our sponsor, Thirdsy. Scan that QR code or head to thirdsy.com. Use that code TEF to save 20%. Like it is a, I, was, I, I got kind of scared. I thought I didn't bring enough. Oh, oh no! For tonight, like, ah. and then I, I was like Weird. tearing my backpack apart because sometimes I like stash one in the yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh, it's still there. Well, so now I have enough. So if I'm you don't go. got that, you also have Texas Day Brazil that oh, you're going to go to. Gonna, and gonna, oh, the, this the, is still a hard subject the, to talk. The yeah. meat sweats. Hey, next time you guys will next make time. It. Hmm. So yeah, I'm flying out tomorrow morning. You guys got a, a couple hours. And it doesn't open till four. Yeah. All right. That's going to do it. As Tommy said, thanks to everybody who watched the broadcast and who attended. This was a fantastic event. A lot of fun. I had an absolute blast. This was a lot more fun than I thought it was going to be, and I, I absolutely needed this uh, as well. No doubt. Um, thanks to Bob and, and Joe for putting on the event and for having us out. Oh, and for the one of the volunteers I got to meet this weekend, Roll Tide. Okay, there you go. I told him I'd do that in our, our, in our next one. So. Nice. <laughs> and Alabama covered yesterday. Yes, so. they do. Oh, that's, Roll Tide. that's the most important thing. <laughs> Tommy Obviously. made money. All right, guys. Uh, for Lauren and Tommy, I'm Sean. Take care of each other. Be better, and we'll talk to you guys next time. Good. It's good. I don't want to wait. When the feeling's right, I'm taking it. Yeah.